a lot of people are retrofitting older homes and buildings these days with insulation, with the intention of improving thermal comfort and reducing the runtime of the HVAC system, whether this is heating in cold climates or air conditioning in warm climates. But what if we told you that insulating can actually worsen indoor humidity issues and that it's actually the cause of a lot of moisture problems in more humid climates, like on the East Coast and Southern United States? This part load humidity problem actually isn't unique to retrofits and remodels, but it's a problem that we see whenever we're improving energy efficiency and reducing energy flow. Let's break this down. When we insulate a building, whether it's an existing home or a new structure, we need to acknowledge that insulation slows down the flow of energy or heat. That's literally the definition of insulation. Now we want to slow down heat flow to make sure that our buildings stay comfortable and so we aren't relying on our heating or cooling system running 24-7. That's the problem with a lot of older buildings. They're not very comfortable and they lose heat or gain heat very quickly. Now there was an unintended benefit to all this heat flow and energy consumption, and that's it helped to dry out the building if it ever got wet. This is why a lot of older buildings are still standing apart from general maintenance. If you were in a warm, humid climate, the air conditioning would be running the majority of the time and would be continuously pulling all that warm, moisture-laden air into the system and releasing cool, dry, dehumidified air. That's right, air conditioning systems have incidental dehumidification benefits. But what happens when we go to insulate that older building? The air conditioning runtime is reduced because the interior stays cooler for a longer period of time since there's less heat flow through the walls and the roof. However, moisture-laden air from the exterior can still diffuse into the building or leak inside or be brought in by fresh air systems like ERVs, raising interior relative humidity levels, not to mention all the moisture that gets generated from the building can also raise interior relative humidity, and we get condensation within the building, especially on surfaces like windows and conductive materials. The air will start to feel heavy and clammy, and you can start to see mold growth on the drywall or interior finishes and start to notice musty smells. So we need supplemental dehumidification to manage all this moisture. The same thing can happen in colder climates as well. If we have an old uninsulated home or building with a cellar, a crawl space, or a basement, and that space has a dirt floor or a slab without a vapor barrier, moisture from the damp soils will always be drying into the building. Now because we have a ton of heat flow in the building due to a lack of insulation, the moisture drying out of the ground into the home wasn't really a big deal. The back side of the sheathing was kept warmer, and the relative humidity within the building was also kept lower, especially since there tended to be a lot of air leakage, in which cold air would leak inside and enter the building, but be warmed by the heating system, reducing the interior relative humidity. But what happens when we insulate the building? Less heat flow, but moisture is still entering the interior space. The back side of the sheathing is also kept colder because presumably the cavities have been insulated, which can result in condensation. Now obviously, there's climates where both of these things can happen, particularly in the Northeast United States, and that's really where we're starting to see a lot of moisture problems in older homes that are being retrofitted improperly with insulation. Now this isn't a dig on insulation or energy efficiency, we just have to be more careful about it and understand that there are consequences to energy efficiency and that we have to do other things to make the system work, like having dedicated dehumidifiers, balanced ventilation, air barriers, and insulating in a way to prevent condensation. And sometimes this means not insulating certain portions of the building if we can't do it the right way. We have a ton of videos on this topic, which we'll link to in the description, as well as videos on how to retrofit a building with insulation. But again, this isn't unique to retrofits. We see this with new construction, especially in projects where the homeowners want to go above and beyond in terms of energy efficiency. And while that's a great thing, we have to do it the right way. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. Every week we get flooded with requests for consultations for projects both large and small in scale around the US and Canada, and sometimes even in Europe, and I'm pleased to announce that we're now offering general consulting services outside of our typical scope of plan and spec reviews and detail drawing development. Sometimes we're brought in just to answer questions and give guidance on how to best address certain aspects of a project, whether it's helping clients determine whether a vented or conditioned roof assembly makes sense based on their performance and durability goals, what type of insulation products to use, how to air seal very specific specific locations, how to retrofit capillary breaks and drainage, and so we're here as your resource in pre-construction to set you up for success. 
So how exactly does our general consulting service work and what do you get? Due to the volume of requests that we receive each week, we obviously can't work with everyone, and so we've implemented a 10-hour minimum project scope, which is paid as a retainer, and that's just our minimum level of scope and engagement to make sure that we're giving your project sufficient attention throughout the entire process, and it also helps to keep things more manageable on our end. As you progress through your project, you will inevitably have some questions that will come up, and we're here to answer those questions as they come. You can schedule meetings with us, send us emails, request us to look into unique building conditions, and provide general feedback. We occasionally issue sketches and written documentation as needed to help clarify any points that we discussed, and provide additional educational resources for you and your team so that you can successfully move forward with your project with confidence. If you're looking for the additional help and need guidance on your project, but you're not quite at the point where you need detailed drawings or have architectural plans for us to review, this is the best service for you. So fill out the contact form below, give us some information about your project, and we'll be in touch soon. Cheers.